the shot that's heard around the world is still a symbol of freedom. And guardian of our first line of defense, great roaring shadows in the sky stand watch on to the far horizon. Men and machines on an ever-increasing scale build the essential equipment for our defenders. And they, the youth of the nation, prepare to guard the ramparts of our American way of life. Meanwhile, the task of every man and woman in the face of the national emergency is an important one. Every ounce of efficiency is needed. For healthy efficiency, food is an essential factor, and ours is a land of abundant harvest, of endless green acres, where cattle are tended with infinite care to produce meat and dairy products of a standard unequaled anywhere else on Earth. The nutritive ingredients in these vast natural resources and in fruits and vegetables abundantly available throughout the year. Two miracles of man's ingenuity have made it possible for us to get the benefits of these health-giving food elements that are now so vitally essential. One of these miracles is modern transportation. Fast trains, speeding planes, and great trucks rush the fresh, wholesome products of nature from farms and orchards to every city in the nation. That is the contribution of one of the modern miracles. The other miracle is controlled mechanical refrigeration. From the time food is prepared for use or picked on farm and orchard, refrigeration protects it and keeps it fresh and safe. Food is refrigerated on trains, in trucks, and then in the retail store where you buy it and take it into your home. There was a time not so long ago when there was no controlled refrigeration to contribute to the protection of health. Here is what is written in the bulletin of a great insurance company, and we quote, In the summer months of bygone years, the death rate ran high, mainly because of the slaughter of young children by intestinal diseases. Diarrhea and enteritis long ranked as the leading causes of death among infants. But today, this onslaught has vanished almost entirely. One vital contributing factor is the improvement that controlled refrigeration has brought in the quality of milk and other foods. Milk, for example, is now quickly refrigerated at the modern dairy farm and kept constantly under refrigeration until it reaches your home. Foods today are delivered to your door with their nutritive elements preserved by every advantage offered by modern science. It is essential that this vital preservation be continued in the home. To be without the essential modern refrigerator would be like going back to the days of the spring house or the use of the well for storing food. It seems unthinkable, doesn't it? But food must somehow be refrigerated if it's to be fit to eat. Turn to such practices might well make useless the progress being made in the science of food and health. Figures of one of the large insurance companies show that in the period from 1927 to 1939, when domestic electric refrigerators were adopted by some 14 million households, the deaths from food poisoning decreased 83 and 3 tenths percent, a good share of which can certainly be attributed to proper preservation of food in the home. No wonder the government holds strict supervision over the production, processing, transportation, and distribution of food. Yet, all these benefits can be lost by improper home storage in only a few hours. Yes, here is today's essential factor in our American life, health. Health that means strong and sturdy bodies for everyone. Much valuable time, previously lost through illness caused by spoiled food, can now be saved. For each task, no matter how great or small, is vital in safeguarding us as a nation. The contribution of proper food in building health should be started on the day of birth and should never be allowed to falter. In public education, the increasing emphasis on the factors contributing to health is invaluable. Let's listen in to what's going on in this classroom.
Today, we're going to take up the subject of food spoilage and its causes. You've learned from your studies in science that there is life in practically everything you eat. All living things contain billions of tiny bits of plant life, which we know as mold, yeast, and bacteria. Some of them are harmless, others are vicious and cause disease. Under a microscope, mold, yeast, bacteria look like this. And harmless or not, it's an ever-changing rule of nature for them to multiply at an alarming rate unless controlled. As they multiply by the billion, they spoil the food they live in and thus become enemies of health. Unfortunately, or even the taste of food, whether or not the bacteria have increased sufficiently to be dangerous. This is particularly true when the pathogenic variety, those which carry disease, are present. Now then, we have learned from scientific experiment that high temperature enables bacteria to multiply very rapidly. It has also been discovered that at low temperature, growth practically stops. Let's examine the importance of these facts. We'll take milk as an example, and suppose it is being stored in a place where the temperature is 55 degrees, a fairly cold temperature. After 24 hours, the bacteria in milk will multiply over 25 times. This rate increases until after 96 hours, they have multiplied almost 6,500 times. But if milk is stored where the temperature is 40 degrees, bacteria multiplication is very slow. After 24 hours, they will multiply two and one half times. And after 96 hours, or four days, only about 22 times. Compare that with almost 6,500 times at 55 degrees. These facts are established conclusively by bulletins like these, many from the United States Department of Agriculture. They all indicate the need for proper temperature control of that important item of food, milk. If bacteria are allowed to multiply, health is placed in danger. And this is also true of meat. Yes, meats are even more difficult to keep safely because the bacteria in them seem to be much more active. At 55 degrees, the bacteria in meat will multiply 32 times in one day. This increases enormously to 390,130 times in 96 hours or four days. But if meats are stored at 40 degrees, this rate of growth is only three times in one day and around 220 times in four days. And if the temperature is dropped just five degrees to 35 degrees, meat may be kept four days with bacteria multiplying only eight times instead of over 390,000 times at 55 degrees. These facts were established by the Agricultural Experimental Station of Iowa State College. It is therefore obvious that we must control food keeping temperature. Scientific research gives us all this data on active food spoilage in order that we may guard against it for the protection of health. The United States government recognizes this potential menace. Here's what the Department of Agriculture says in a press release. Epidemics of food poisoning reported every summer are usually directly traceable to improper refrigeration of foods of this group. Bacteria infected custard mixtures of milk and egg, raw and cooked meat, especially ground meat, are most often the sources of trouble. In other words, the foods we eat contain potential enemies by the billion. We cannot depend on nature for defense. Some form of controlled refrigeration is necessary to properly preserve food and thus protect our health and that of our families. Yes, indeed. The building of health should be started on the day of birth and never be relaxed. The contributions of our government, of public schools and colleges to the knowledge of food preservation are of vital importance to everyone in the nation. Many private agencies also are devoted to the task of furthering knowledge on proper food preservation and preparation. Meetings like this, for example, are planned for the homemaker. Perhaps no other factor in the home plays as important a part in the health of the family as the modern refrigerator. Complete knowledge of this appliance is therefore highly essential. One of the first things to consider 
is exactly what occurs in normal operation. In other words, how does the cold circulate in an electric refrigerator? Here's exactly what happens. Cold air comes from the freezer. It moves down through the center of the cabinet until it reaches the bottom. Then it swings up the sides and circulates back to the top. At a normal cold setting, it's well below freezing in the freezer, about 16 degrees under average conditions. The next coldest place is directly below the freezer, about 35 degrees. In the general food compartment, it's 40 degrees. And at the bottom of the cabinet, 44 degrees. The air is now warm enough to start rising. The compartments on either side of the freezer would be the warmest, except the cold blanket of air around the freezer keeps them at 39 degrees. Now let's see what these temperatures mean to the food. Here are the things the modern housewife buys every week, plus a few leftovers and some dishes partly made up. Quite an assortment, isn't it? But in all of these items, there are really just five general classifications of food. Suppose we separate them according to those classifications. We'll start out with frozen foods. These should be stored at temperatures well below freezing. Thawing reduces their vitamin content. Meats are the most difficult of all to keep safely. They need cold just above freezing, but also need high humidity, 80 to 90 percent, because they're 67 percent water and dry out and shrink without moisture. If the health of the family is to be protected, milk must be kept fresh. Milk and cream are among the most perishable of foods. This group requires the next degree of cold, just under 40 degrees. And put the bottled and canned beverages along with them to chill before serving. Now for the staples and leftovers. They need the standard temperature of 40 degrees. This is the correct temperature for most of the food stored in the refrigerator. The vitamins and minerals of fruit and vegetables are protected if they're kept at a temperature under 50 degrees. These foods also require high humidity, 90 to 100 percent. Now that we have the foods classified, suppose we load them correctly and safely, that is, so their nutritive values are protected to do their part in keeping your family healthy. Each requires slightly different conditions. The first step to keep food properly is to start with the right temperature, 40 degrees in the middle of the food compartment. You simply set the dial to that temperature, 40 degrees. This particular refrigerator automatically maintains the temperature selected, regardless of kitchen temperature. However, if you have a refrigerator with the ordinary cold control, just be sure you maintain 40 degrees in the food compartment at all times. Follow the manufacturer's directions for proper control settings. And now, to properly load the refrigerator, the frozen foods go into the compartment where it's well below freezing. Meats must have proper humidity, ventilation, and circulation of air. Therefore, they must be kept in a tray like this, with a trivet or rib bottom to permit circulation under the meat as well as around it, and a loose fitting cover to hold moisture and allow ventilation, and placed directly under the freezer. If your refrigerator isn't equipped with a meat keeper like this one, use the glass tray. Don't wrap the meat. Cover it lightly with wax paper so that it's properly ventilated and be sure to get circulation under the meat. Milk and cream go where it's 39 degrees. They keep better as close to the freezer as possible, but without touching it, to prevent freezing. And there's also room here for canned and bottled beverages. Staples go into the general food compartment where it's 40 degrees. High water content foods, like leftover dishes, should be covered to keep the moisture in them. Here's the place to keep prepared foods, like molded salads and desserts ready to serve, refrigerator cookies, and dough to keep it chilled. 
And remember, always remove paper bags. They have no place in a refrigerator. They aren't sanitary, and they keep the cold from penetrating food. Remove eggs from the carton and place in a wire basket or a bowl and put them low in the refrigerator. Here's something you may not know. During summer months, keep chocolate in the refrigerator or the oil will melt and spoil it. Another one, shelled nuts should be kept in the refrigerator to prevent them from becoming rancid. Cold storage space is valuable, so don't clutter your refrigerator with mayonnaise, pickles, and things like that. They'll keep just as well on a cupboard shelf. Fruits and vegetables need slightly less cold, but high humidity, 90 to 100 percent. Exposure to air destroys their vitamins and causes them to dry out. They should be kept in a covered drawer at the bottom of the refrigerator. If you haven't a humid drawer, use a crisping pan or one of those handy vegetable bags. Just be sure the foods are covered. Lemons, oranges, and grapefruit should be kept covered to prevent drying out. Always wash vegetables, unedible portions, and place in the refrigerator immediately. If peas are to be kept several days, do not shell them. After shelling, they lose their vitamins. There are exceptions to these rules. Tomatoes are stored in the food compartment because they don't hold up under high humidity. The same is true of pears or avocados and grapes. Berries, if kept overnight, should be lightly covered with waxed paper and stored in the food compartment. They don't like too much moisture. Bananas are never stored in a refrigerator. If ripe, they will spoil more quickly. If green, they will not ripen properly. The storage bin is a great convenience. For instance, extra beverage bottles will be on hand for chilling when the supply in the refrigerator becomes low. Here's the place to keep extra cans of fruit juices. crackers and cereals, but never store potatoes or onions, as they may sprout. With everything stored in the right degrees of cold, bacteria do not multiply to spoil food and menace your family's health. It means better food protection and better health protection. There are many important publications on this vital subject. Bulletins and pamphlets the results of exhaustive research on the care of food and the protection of health are published by the various government departments and many private agencies. They're available to any homemaker. There are other advantages in proper food preservation. For instance, you can store more food longer. It saves time by reducing shopping to a once or twice a week basis. It's an economy too, because it prevents food waste and spoilage. It lets you buy in quantity and take advantage of bargains. And you can make more use of leftovers. Here's what a government bulletin has to say. All wastes of food, big or little, are wastes of defense resources. You're taking part in the victory program when you preserve food properly. You're saving time and money, too. But above all, you're making a vital contribution to the health of your family, and that means to the health of the nation. And as a factor so important to proper food preservation, so important to health and economy, yes, a vital cog in the machinery of defense, this major appliance deserves proper care in the home. Whether a refrigerator is old or new, proper care can help it deliver additional years of real service Defrosting at proper intervals is important, for the ice and frost act as insulators and prevent the maintenance of proper food-keeping temperature. This is costly, because the refrigerating unit has to run a greater part of the time trying to attain the proper temperature. Do not set a definite day of the week for defrosting. The accumulation of frost varies according to atmospheric conditions and the amount of food in the refrigerator. Follow the manufacturer's directions for defrosting. One simple procedure is to turn the dial to off, remove the ice cubes, leave the refrigerator door open, 
and fill the trays with warm water. This causes the frost to melt quickly. Always melt frost away. Never under any conditions use an ice pick to break it away. If you prefer to defrost overnight, turn the dial to defrost. If the refrigerator is equipped with meat keeper or shallow tray, remove the cover and the food and allow the moisture to drip into the tray. How often should the interior be cleaned? Well, once a week is a good rule. And to clean it thoroughly, remove all food from the shelves. Remove wire racks and clean them thoroughly. Bits of butter or a drop of cream are excellent breeding places for bacteria. The humid drawer and meat keeper should be washed in hot sudsy water every week. If the refrigerator has glass shelves, these should be washed in the same manner. The porcelain enamel lining and the freezer are best cleaned with warm water and soda. When wire racks are removed, wash the top, bottom, and sides. And be sure to clean the glides which hold the shelves. To preserve the luster of cabinets finished in Dulux or lacquer, first, be sure the surface is clean and dry. And then apply a thin coat of wax lightly with a cheesecloth, working small surfaces and polishing immediately. When you clean house, clean the condenser of your refrigerator. If it's full of dirt, it can't operate efficiently. This is especially important in the older types equipped with fans. The cleaning can easily be done with a small vacuum. The newer refrigerators have plate type condensers, which require no cleaning, but can be dusted if desired. Most modern refrigerators have hermetically sealed units with a lifetime supply of oil. They never need oiling. Open type units, however, do need oil occasionally. Any reliable electrical dealer will do the job and advise how often it should be repeated. If you have an electric refrigerator, you can get greater service from it by following these few simple rules. We do have enemies by the billion. Proper refrigeration is needed to combat them. And the electric refrigerator should be bought with the complete knowledge of the job it has to do. It should be used correctly to serve as the protector of health, and it should be cared for properly. For the housewife in the home is prime guardian of that essential factor, the health of the American family. And to her important task, that modern miracle, refrigeration, contributes a vital part. Yes, a healthy America is a strong America. Thank you.